I come to save the day. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, we're back. And this week, we're going to have part two of how to select a window. And we're going to talk about the nitty gritty details of those windows and how to select the right one. But first, click that subscribe button, click the bell, and uh, leave us a new Crush the there. bell. Crush the bell. There you go. <laughs> you can also leave us some notes below, get any questions, <clears throat> and uh, we, we'll get back to you right away and answer those questions for you as soon as we can. Uh, right. So getting started here, last week we talked about the types of windows and things like that, the, the big picture yeah, stuff. and what they're made of typically. Right. So this week we want to get into the details of it and how they're actually made and what you might want to select in the process of, of uh, making those windows or having them made for you. So first up right. is... Where are you putting the window? Are they going to be in an, yeah. a covered area like this, or are they going to be facing south, west? All that makes a difference. Yeah. So, unfortunately, most people, when they look at windows, you know, whether they're dealing with a sales rep or just looking at them themselves, they're they're told that you know these windows are great, they're insulating, they save energy, but sometimes saving energy can cost you money. Right. So, which way? does your house face or which way does that window face? Um, because if you have north facing windows, you're going to want something that might actually get a little more solar heat generated in the winter. Yep. So if you put a low E, uh, like it's argon fill where something where it's going to block all that solar radiation in the winter yep. on the north side, your heating bills can go up. <laughs> exactly. So having that added heat is not a bad thing. So you don't just order windows for all the same sides of your house. So how do we determine what we want to use where? We start with first the direction that window faces. Right. Second is every window has a label on it. Right. And you, where are those fancy labels there, Sonar? No. You, let's go to right there. Yes. That, that, that's the label you're looking for. Yes. And all these numbers make a big difference. They have meaning. <laughs> yes, they do. So there you go. So most important to start with is your U factor. The U factor is basically the same as the R value in insulation. And it seems like most people understand R value. So my exterior wall has R11, mm -hmm. but it's better if I have R30, right? Yeah. More insulation. And my ceiling has R19, but I'm going to have somebody blow in 30 inches of cellulose right. so they now have R38, right? Right. So that's what people know. They know the R value. The U value is what we call the inverse. It's just the opposite. Instead of having a big number, you want a lower number. So the lower the U value, the more efficient, the better insulating that window is. <laughs> It's all good. Keep going, brother. You're on. I am. You're I am. On. I know. I'm just laughing here. Just keep moving that thing around. Um, but anyway, to, right? so yeah, I can put the my U value is really important. <laughs> yeah, see, it's perfect. Yes. So the U value is, is your most important. That is how well a window insulates. So the lower the U value, the better the window. Right. The next one is that solar heat gain coefficient. That, that's what I was referring to when I was saying, which side of the house do they face? Yep. So if you have south or east or west facing, that solar heat gain coefficient, you want to keep that number low. You do not want to pick up a lot of solar heat. Right. But if you live up north and you've got north facing windows as the sun moves to the north in the winter, you want to pick up that heat. Right. So having a higher solar heat gain coefficient is not a bad thing on a north facing window. So don't be afraid to get a different glass or a different style. Right, or if you have your overhangs where they're, they're protected during the summer because the sun's higher in, in the angle in the yep. sun, you could have larger overhangs and then you could, yes. you could pick up that solar uh, heat gain in the winter because the, the sun is lower in, in the, on the horizon and now that sun will mm -hmm. get in there and warm the house up. So depending on the design of your house, you may or may not want that solar heat gain and even facing east and, and west. Right. So and where it gets complicated, like, again, where I'm at, we don't have large soffits and it's not to shade the windows. It's for uplift if there's a hurricane. OK. Large soffits would actually create more uplift and rip the roof off your house. 
So again, goes back to design, more thought goes into this than whew, 189, two for the price of one, doesn't happen, trust me. <laughs> no, I can so get the next one number, for 15. So just to back up a little, this label comes from what they call the NFRC, the National Fenestration Rating Council. And every window manufacturer, pretty much everybody subscribes to this, but they only must put the first three on there. The U factor, solar heat gain, and visible transmittance. Yep. The air leakage and condensation resistance are voluntary. Yes. So you may not see that. Um, you know, I'll talk about that in a minute. But the visible transmittance is really has more to do with your low E coatings and stuff. It's how much light, visible light, does it really block out? Right. For us, I look for visible transmittance in the low numbers, but you can get them a visible transmittance of 70 or something. With, that's clear glass, but I get a lot of brown glass. Okay. So that our visible transmittance goes down. It's like putting sunglasses on your house. Okay. Yeah. Again, where you live matters. You, All my years up in Chicago, I never once ordered gray glass. All right. Down here, <laughs> we do it a lot. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? It's just because it's just better. So that is gonna do with where you're located. But now the air leakage, I've never really liked that number because they test the sash at the middle. Right. Do they and test if the you whole have window? air leakage in the middle of the sash, which is where all that <laughs> glass part is, that means you have a hole in your glass. Right. Quite honestly, I'm not sure how they even get to 0 0.1. Well, if that's the if this was a uh, a sash, I mean a uh, casement, and they were doing the pressure test from the outside with the sash closed, locked, and they were doing a test, maybe you could get that leakage correct. Um, if you were doing from the inside out, where that that sash can actually get sash pushed is being away pushed away from the weather stripping, then you're going to have more of yeah. the leakage. So right. you want to make sure they're testing the entire window assembly not just the sash itself it, it's that yeah. what is the one percent or that point one percent germ that no <laughs> that no one can defeat yeah so it's the same thing yeah. the 99.9 percent .9 air uh efficiency right with, of exactly. glass <laughs> right yeah in well, case there's a bb hole in your glass right that's probably the entire assembly you know, that's the entire window, jam, everything. Well, that's what you actually have to ask that if you're having somebody quote, and most of the time salespeople won't know because I have a hard time finding that from manufacturers now, whether it's the sash tested or the assembly. Right. Most don't know. So we don't, I don't put a lot into the air leakage one. And I definitely, the condensation resistance really is going to go down to the glass you choose, which is the next thing we want to talk about. So the first thing you're going to have, oh my God, that's a great photo, Thank is you. your single pane, <laughs> a single pane of glass. Right. I'm just going to be your van here, right here. So that's your there single you pane. So think about this as condensation resistance. I have a single pane of glass. It's 30 degrees outside and it's, 40, or, and it's 60 degrees inside with 70% humidity. Yeah. How much condensation do you think I'll have on the inside of that glass? It'll be raining. All of it. <laughs> It'd be raining. Right, right. So that would give you a thermal resistance closer to the 0 0.1. Right. <laughs> it's yep. going to rain. Yes. Now, the double pane there, the next one, that one in the middle, that's two pieces of glass sandwiched with a spacer bar, yep. and they use a little thermal rubber, whatever, to, to keep them from having conduction, bring cold right through that spacer into the other piece. And if it's a cheaper window, do you ever go to somebody's house and you notice that even though they have thermal pane, two pieces of glass, that there's still condensation on the bottom? Yep. Well, sometimes it's because it's a cheaper window that doesn't, ha it might have an aluminum bar in there. Well, the aluminum bar is really conductive, so it will actually cause the inner sash, particularly at the bottom, to get cold and thus condensation. Right. And Maybe that's a Condensation factor of 30. Yeah. So then also the way that wraps around, we see a lot of times the way that sash wraps around and holds the glass. If that's not mm -hmm. caulked and sealed, you'll get air leakage around the glass and it'll come around the frame and, and leak inside also. So. so, and another thing about when somebody tells you you have a thermal pane window, the space between the glass is important. Yep. So your typical window, let's call it a 30 quarter inch thermal pane window. And that's the overall three Three quarter That's what through. most people don't realize either. So the glass on both sides is an eighth inch thick. Mm -hmm. So that means you only have a half inch space between them. 
Right. So if I told you I have a one inch thermal pane and I have a three quarter inch space between them, that actually increases its U value drastically. It yep. makes it a much better assembly. Yes. And most people won't, you don't pick up on that. That's why we're doing this. Try right. to explain, try to explain all this. <laughs> exactly. The next one is your triple glaze. Right. Now the triple glaze is sort of your, again, your Cadillac of windows. Your outer pane will have a low E coating that keeps all that UV light from coming in. Um, we've done them where there's low E coating on the inside so that it doesn't bounce. You right. can't trap it and just keep that radiation going. Um, the spaces between the glass are gonna be filled with different things, um, which is our next point. It's either gonna be vacuum sealed. Right. And this goes for double pane or, oh, there you go. I didn't know you had that. Yeah. All right, but it goes, it, it varies based, or I should say it doesn't matter if it's a double pane or a triple pane. They're usually vacuum sealed. Basically, they suck all the air out of it, so it's got a vacuum, and they seal up the window, sandwich it together, and, and they, there you are. And then you put the argon gas in, or uh, whatever yep. gases are going to put in there. Yeah, you have argon, krypton. There's yep. a number of inert gases, and the point of those is that they're heavier than air. They tend not to leak out. Uh, so if your seal breaks on a window and it's vacuum, it's going to suck in air, and it may suck in moisture. So if you've ever seen cloudiness between your panes of glass, right. you know, wash the inside and the outside and it won't come off, that means your seal's broke somewhere and you've sucked in the air. If you have argon or krypton, even if there's a small hole, it tends not to leak out. It needs a larger hole to empty. Right. So again, they're a little more money. And I kind of touched on it already. It's not just what's in your glass, the coatings, and you can have high performance low E. Some manufacturers call it low E2, low E366, uh, sun shield. You know, what they are is they're just another step above your, your standard low E. Um, but again, it raises the price. The other thing with most of those improved low E coatings, they're not a clear color. Most of right. them are purple. And that's where I was going to go is if you, if you have one of those a brand new low E and then you put a, an, you have an older window next to it, you're going to see that color difference when you're trying to look yeah. outside and when you're outside looking in, you'll say, you'll be able to look and one's going to be darker than the other. And, and that's what's going on. Yeah. You have all those low E coatings on them, which causes that to make a big difference. So if you're trying yeah, to get a lot I remember, of light it was now, probably what, 15 won't. years ago, they came out with 366. I think yeah. it was the first one that was like the high performance. And I remember doing that. I put an addition on the house and it was like, rut row. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> never anticipated that the glass wouldn't match. Right. It's glass. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Got through that though. Um, so yeah, so that when you're looking at your glass and I touched on this earlier, your standard's gonna be clear. So then you can get clear insulating glass. Oh, there you go. There's the argon and krypton filled. There yep. you go. See, like a bigger bulbs. Oh, and uh -oh. Then, what's that? That looks like a broken window. <laughs> that one is. Okay, so. Tempered? Huh? The, tempered. That tempered? That, that, okay, we're getting there. That's fine. Yep. So, so anyway, yeah, that's your argon or krypton filled space. And right. again, you see the molecules, they drew them larger, which is the point. Right. You they know, can't leak so out. You don't use hydrogen. Them. Hydrogen molecules are smaller than oxygen molecules. They'd fall right out. So. <laughs> cool. So then you go to your uh, tinted or I mean, uh, sorry, your tempered. Yeah, we talked about that. I use a gray glass. We use a tinted glass, but that's pretty much mostly for sun shading in Florida. Right. Right, and, and we rarely are we looking for tinting up here in the Chicago. Area. Right, but the two major that we're looking for is always either you're going to have what you're showing there broken. Right. Is tempered. Right. And tempered glass is any piece of glass that is within 24 inches of a door. It has to be what uh, within 9 inches or 18 inches of the floor and over 9 square feet. 18 inches so, of the floor. Basically, any place you can run into it, running down the stairs, bottom of the stairs, that window, right. better be tempered. Right. And the point is when you break it, it breaks into those small shards that won't cut you up into pieces. It just blows apart. Right. Okay? So tempered's good. And it was funny when we were talking about this, I hadn't even thought about tempered because I haven't used it in so long because we do all hurricane stuff. So we use all laminated glass. And laminated is... It's tempered, but it's sandwiched like your windshield. It's two pieces of glass with plastic in the middle. Right. And that's where they do the missile testing, right? You shoot a two by four at it at 240 miles an hour <laughs> and it won't go through it. Right. Don't get me wrong. It, it breaks the glass. Sure. 
but it, it doesn't. It doesn't but it come does apart. not come in the house. It will not come in. It will, and which again changes air pressure and makes the house explode. Right. You know, during a hurricane. So it's really cool. The missile testing. Yeah, go on YouTube. Make lots of videos. <laughs> it's very cool. Yeah. All right. So those are your most of it. That's your glass. Those are the things you need to look for. The U value. You want to look at your thermal transmittance. You want to look at you know uh, the visible or the solar heat gain coefficient, which is key. But ultimately, it installation is going to be a big part of this. It, it, you could buy the most expensive window you could find, and you install it really bad, it's not going to do its job. And it can't work properly if it's not installed right. So you can exactly. install a, a cheap vinyl window really well, and that can, could perform a lot better than the most expensive window you could find that's not installed correctly. So let's go over that really real quick here of the options and you can see a lot of ways they're just not installed correctly and and this is how you would properly do it each window manufacturer is going to have this in their installation instructions of how they want it installed you should kind of like and that's usually right on the window <laughs> yeah. well yeah but they just rip it off they don't actually look at that right but i mean it's typically it's on the window correct correct so, how so we, that's called how a modified our... eye so what you're doing is you're flashing tape for your sill Right, that's there. And you're lifting up your water, your drainage plane above the window. Correct. You insert your window. You flash the top the, or the bottom, the sides, the top. Right. And then you put all your stuff back over it. And then, yeah, it all folds down. There comes in. And, you're, and then the last thing is that that's folding over and it's all around the fins that are around the window. So now yeah. any moisture that does get in, it's going to hit those, hit those flashings and come out. But they've got to get past all this other stuff. And when all of these are installed correctly and you're not tucking your uh, rain jacket into your rain boots, there's no way for that water to get in in the first place. So, right. Um, no, and that's really key. We see that all the time. So, and you said the phrase properly, the nailing fins. Right. Those things around the windows with the holes in them <laughs> yes. are not flashing. Right. Those are to hold them in the hole. Right. It's exactly. You have to add flashing. So yes, the sills get flashed, then the sides, then the top, just like the opposite of, just like shingling a roof. Start yep. at the bottom, work your way up so that the water can only run down. Correct. So. And any water so that does get in comes out. is hugely important. Yeah. Yep. So, and I said waterproofing, I only step on that because we, most of our homes are blocked. We use structural lumber for bucking. We put our windows in and we use, uh, elastomeric waterproofing compounds and we smear it all around the windows that's that's a technical term though right that yes it is a yes it's a, and it's a schmear and we right. actually have an, a schmear inspection <laughs> so that we can make sure that we smeared them properly yeah there you actually, go. actually there is nothing in the code for the schmear oh okay cool but yeah by code we do not have to waterproof the windows that's insane we have to attach them properly well you know but yeah. wind driven rain right but anyway so that's just one thing uh, insulation is key, and I like to see what you're showing, Dara. We got some great stuff, door and window, minimally right. expanding foam, so that particularly double hungs. If you use regular foam and you use that, and you put too much in there, it can expand and bind the window, and your double hung will not go up and down very well. It pushes this board into this board, and then your window doesn't open anymore. Exactly. So the low, look There's for no the blue window. can, uh, at least if you're yeah, using the blue can's stuff. good. Well, and the thing is, and you know, we joke about this. I mean, I'm no spring chicken. I've been doing this a long time. Back in my day, For sure. all we did is take fiberglass insulation. We'd tear strips of it and we'd take our chisel and tuck it in that slot. Yep, yep that's good. And we insulated that window. Right. No, we now, put air filters. Now, here we go on 20 years. We do a little <laughs> blower door testing. And what I found out is we installed air filters. Yes. <laughs> we did nothing to stop the heater cold. Best we did was stop the dust from coming in. Right. So the air so was that's cleaner why inside. Every, Every time somebody I'm on a job and somebody goes, well, that's how we always do it. I just cringe. Right. Because it's like, if we all did it the way we were taught 20 or 30 or 35 years ago, mm -hmm. we couldn't get a house through a blower door test if our life depended on yep. it. We've we learned a lot. still be living in mud huts. Years, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. A sod house. There you go. So yeah, it drives me crazy. Last, uh, last all right, So insulation is a big one. And then yeah. warranty. So now. What's the warranty? I, it could be taillight, curb, <laughs> lifetime, transferable. Seriously, when you look at a warranty, though, um, I've had window manufacturers. I did a house for a, a couple. Actually, it was a spec. 
they were in the house 20 years. Yeah. And they had two sashes in the back of the house fail. Right. And I'll call out the manufacturer. It was Herd. Okay. Herd Windows. I contacted Herd. Yep. I said, I sold them this house 20 years ago. They have two sashes that are bad. They go, can you give us the numbers off the sash? I said, yes. Yep. Gave them the numbers. They'll be out there in two weeks. Right. <laughs> Sent them new sashes. Lifetime warranty. Yep. People were blown away, first off, that I answered their phone call. Right. And secondly, that the window company, Backed no, it up. they stood behind it. In right. 20 years, they had two sashes and the whole house fail. And they happened to be in a backside, high sun, you know, face right. in west. Totally understandable why it blew that, you know, may have failed after 20 years. Right. But Herd stepped up, boom, done. If I can get Herd windows, I will. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it's a beautiful thing. So but Marvin, David, Ella, Ella, Anderson, all the Marvin, they're all great windows. Yep. I've worked with them all. Yep. And then, know, so. so look at the warranty, look at the lifetime warranty. And if it's some uh, company you've never heard of before, they yeah. may not be around. They'll give you a lifetime warranty, but if they're not going to be around in five yeah. years. Whose lifetime, yours right. or theirs? Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. go with a reputable company that you know has been around yeah. and has a good track record and look at the, look at the warranty. So um, with that, we're running a little bit long today. So just going to say uh, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Click the bell. And until next time. Keep it square and level. There you go. Keep it square and level. All right. Rock and roll on the window. That's it. You graduated. Do you think we, do you think we made that subject clearer? <laughs> I don't know if we made it clear Oh, clear, enough. right? Yeah. <laughs> as clear as uh, three pages. Clear as mud. Right. right. Clear as mud. <laughs>